Hello and welcome to Terror Talk on Terror Express. This is Jason Bradford and I am happy to announce the return again of Jimmy Presley, author of Bloody Halloween, coming back to discuss Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. Welcome back, Jimmy. Are you ready to get our hands dirty with a little Roy Burns talk? Uh, you know, this one here is the one I call the fun Friday movie. There's just something about this one that really, I love it. You I, know, it's just really fun. Mm -hmm. I, I love the I don't give a fuck vibe that yes. the filmmakers had in this one. Um, Danny Steinman, he went for what he wanted to do. He did what he wanted to do, and he delivered what he wanted. And I, you watch it, there's no apologies. It's very gritty. It's raw. It's still got some, it's it got, I wouldn't say it's still got it. It's got great kills in it and it's got a lot of kills in it i think when five came out it had the highest body count at that point with yep. 22 i don't know if you want to count the two in the beginning the dream sequence with tommy is actual body count but it's an on-screen kill so i count them yeah yeah i do so we got the <laughs> we got the return of Corey feldman as tommy in this one in the flashback dream sequence uh now, obviously, fans of the franchise know or fans of Corey Feldman know or even fans of the 80s know that the reason he was unable to do this was because he was committed to filming The Goonies at the time. Now, what, Jimmy, do you think part five would have been like had Feldman been able to commit to the uh, the role of Tommy throughout the entire film? You know, <clears throat> I there's it's really divided, right? I mean, there's two sides. You, you either like it or you don't. And. I think it for the people that don't like it. I think a lot of them might have liked it a little more if Corey mm -hmm. could have came on and and kind of, you know, I think he would have been the only person to do that since uh, Adrian King to come back. I mean, you know, even though she died at the start, he kind of has his moment at the start. But to to play Tommy all the way through, I think that might have changed a lot of fans' minds on it. But maybe not, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I sometimes wonder what we would have gotten, but then I also think I'm glad, and I love Corey Feldman. Don't get me wrong; he's my experience with him was always very professional and and funny. I'm glad we got the Tommy that we got. I think this was my favorite Tommy in the franchise, more so than than Tom Matthews. I know Tom Matthews is a fan favorite, but this this Tommy was I don't know his performance was top notch. He was believable. The PTSD that he displayed was was very raw and and heartfelt and i just i felt this is the tommy that i think really carried realistically what we should see in a tommy after the events of part four i, I think john shepherd uh he yeah he portrayed uh, yeah, I, I agree with you 100 percent on that. That's all I have to say. John really so and I, I've got a lot of Friday autographs, and mm -hmm. you know John's one of my favorites. Uh, I have I have I think I have him and Tom Matthews. I want Corey's to say I have all the Tom Tommies, but um, I I think you're right. I think Tom, uh, sorry John Shepard. Wow, yeah, he sold the uh, the the after effects of four yeah. really well. I feel like you can really feel his pain and the part where Eddie comes through the 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 dining door, the dining room door uh, for breakfast wearing Tommy's mask and that fight scene. You could feel his his anger and the way he was blowing those punches was mm -hmm. uh, whoever choreographed these fight scenes in part five, like the scene with Eddie or the scene with Junior later on. I think the fight scenes in part five were were fantastic. Yes. Yes, Very I did. Well I did the, right. Same with the. Uh, I'm giving the guy credit even on the end between Melanie, you know, and uh, uh, Tom Morgan. I guess it was. Mm -hmm. But you know, I just thought that that fight where they in the barn mode. So I thought you know you're right. I think they were all staged fantastically in that film. Yeah, they definitely had had uh, people who knew what they were were doing and delivered great scenes with that now the only the only thing and this is probably a continuity issue i don't know how many people noticed but did you notice that after tommy really gives it to eddie that morning at breakfast this is now uh, correct me if i'm wrong this is the night that or the morning of the night that uh eddie and tina wander off into the woods or it's the day before but either way 
where are his bruises? He's taking a shirt off and he doesn't have a mark on him. Those punches would have gave him some major purple and black and maybe even yellow <laughs> yeah. bruises. And he was clean. <laughs> yeah, he was clean. You're right. He, I, he got I feel like there should them. have there should have been some kind of marks on his body from those punches. Yeah. Because Tommy didn't the one around. thing. <laughs> yeah, yes. I agree. Yeah. I agreed. And uh but then we got we got the uh let's talk a little bit about my my two favorite characters. And I wanna I wanna let listeners know part five is my my favorite out of the franchise now part three is my favorite movie ever made but in the franchise part five is my favorite so i want to make sure this i just want people to know this i'm really excited talking here so i might talk fast or i might stutter or i might repeat myself it's just <laughs> because of my love of the new beginning but let's yeah. talk about a little bit about junior and ethel played by carol Ocatel uh-huh. and ron sloan they are some of the best characters in in the franchise i might dare even say cinematic history as far as as the um the re- the relationship between the two characters and actors go uh, yeah. what did you th- what did you think about ma and junior hubbard oh man you know i don't want to take i don't want to take anything away from anybody else in the franchise but I have to agree with you. When I think of part five, the first thing that pops in my head is uh, you know, Ethel uh, mm-hmm. talking to Junior. I just, I thought they stole the show. I wish they had had more screen time. Um, that's all I, I have to say. Right. I've never, you know, they're fantastic. I'm just, I'm, I'm blessed to have both of their autographs too because, you know, God rest yes. her soul. Same. Carol, wow. Just fantastic. <laughs> fantastic yes. actress. yeah she she really was her and ron together were great i oh, they're yeah. kind of like the sandy and danny of the horror movies but they're yes. mother and son instead of high school sweethearts <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yes. uh, the twist the twisted sandy and danny but uh, um <laughs> yeah i was fortunate enough to have them both here on the terror express which episodes are should be here on iheart radio or youtube wherever you're watching or listening go check out their episode it's called i'm gonna scare the fucking shit out of you Carol Ocatel came up with with that title for that episode, which is fittingly so. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was very honored to be able to meet her and and Ron and Deborah and Dick and Melanie, and I. I the cast of Part Five has been the best with the fans that I have have witnessed to date, mm-hmm. and I think that might lend a little bit as to why I love Part Five so much. Yes, yeah, I agree. I've I've uh, I've never. I think part five may be the only one in the franchise where I actually haven't met anybody in person from that film, except Dick Warlock, who I assume played Jason in some of the John Shepard's flashback scenes and maybe mm-hmm. helped with some of the stunt work. You know, he played Michael Myers in Halloween too, which we talked about in our, the last episode, but I think Dick may have been Warlock may have been the only one I met, but uh, I, I I got to know a lot of them online, and they yeah. are just they're the ones that will talk to you. And, yeah, and, and absolutely. Interact. Yeah, yes, absolutely. When my sister passed away, I got a letter in the mail from Ron Sloan, you know, giving his sympathies. I mean, who who does that? Um, yeah. Well, Ron Sloan and the cast of Part Five does that. That's who. And I was but, really touched with that. I've gotten you know a, a great repertoire with Deborah Voorhees who did 13 Fanboy and I was fortunate to be involved with that. I mean one of, two of my biggest bragging rights for the horror genre actually tie into Deborah Voorhees and 13 Fanboy. <laughs> Meeting Judy Aronson of the final chapter in person and her walking in and her knowing my last name before I could even tell her who I was was very <laughs> thrilling. And the other ones being able to say, I played Jason Voorhees in a film with Kane Hodder and CJ Graham is bragging rights beyond the rights to brag. <laughs> it's it's like, that's so cool. I mean, it's it's literally like a five second shot with Corey Feldman. And it's like this knockoff value brand, Jason Voorhees. But I still get to, I can still say that. And that's really cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and I then, uh, Tiff, and I also want to say Tiffany Helm has mm. also been so wonderful. Who played Violet in Part Five? Famous for her mm-hmm. robot dance. Obviously, I think she is. <laughs> she is absolutely fantastic. And like I said, the entire cast of Part Five has just blown me away with their involvement with their their, their fans. 
Yeah, Tiffany, I, just to throw it in real quick while you're on her, I, she, mm -hmm. uh, I've been friends with her on Facebook for a long time. We really, we just talked about Friday the 13th, but recently we found something else to talk about. It's my son, Aaron, he plays, you know, the banjo, and she was picking it mm -hmm. up. And learn, and yeah. we all, we're go we always go back and forth on that and the banjo play, and it's turned into, you know, not a I'm not saying some great blossoming friendship, but it's something that we talk about pretty regularly. And I, she's yeah, just such it's, a sweetheart. It, it's a connection, and that's that's yes. what I that's that's my point. Yeah, they definitely connect, and I love that. And I would I would love to hear Aaron playing. Maybe after after we uh finish recording these episodes, we can I can sit back in a little bit and enjoy his talents if you if he doesn't Absolutely. mind <laughs> no, 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 and maybe no. we and maybe we can get tiffany as well <laughs> to oh, show yeah. us a little Heck bit of yeah. what she's got <laughs> but, i love that <laughs> now let's let's talk a little bit about um first let me uh, a, a little behind the scenes trivia here a lot of people seem to think that there is an extended scene between tina and eddie or that there is a deleted shot with the head shears making contact with her eyes there is not a shot with the head shears making contact with her eyes there is not an extended scene between tina and eddie's lovemaking what you see is what was filmed and that comes from deborah Voorhees herself so um i know a lot of fans debate this and and stuff but um i just want to throw that out there so um let's talk about katrosser Yes. Who also, who Martin Kutrosser, who not only wrote the screenplay, um, who was one of the ones who wrote the screenplay for part five, he also did the screenplay for part three. And like I said, part three and five are my two favorites. And I have to wonder if maybe it's the, the screenplay genius, <laughs> quote unquote oh. genius on it's on, on Kutrosser here. But let's talk about the similarities between part three and five that make you wonder if these were deliberate choices. And yeah, we talked sure. about this a little bit the other day, and I I had some fun with this one, and I think I think you did too. Yeah, um, yeah, we did. Go yes. ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I guess we'll start first. Talk about the mud butts. I like to call it the mud butts. The the use of the bathroom without wiping the ass before pulling up the pants um, <laughs> would I definitely leave a mud butt. So. We have in part three, we have two mud butts. We have Harold in the beginning <laughs> before his demise. So he he went to the, the corner with a mud butt. And then we have later on in the same episode, we have Chuck, uh, who is too scared to wipe his ass when Chili scares him. So he also went to the corner with a mud butt. And then we come to part five and we have Demon and the crapper with the snake that's going to crawl up, crawl up that crapper and bite his ass in, in that nasty <laughs> shit box. Uh, who was terrified by Anita, who was shaking his outhouse. So he pulled up his pants and went to the corner with a mud butt. Do you yeah. think Katrosser has that sense of humor where he did this deliberately or if, if and it was on a repeat with his his writing style or if this was something that just happened? I, I personally just, I, I really want to say I hope it just happened. Because, you know, until we <laughs> talked about it, I, I never put that together either. Well, I did, I did with Harold. I always say, Harold, yes. my God, he didn't even wipe. And you hear all that noise. So, like, for you God's hear sake, it. wipe. <laughs> yes. And you hear it very well. It yes. <laughs> sounds like somebody <laughs> actually recorded themselves going to the bathroom. Right. <laughs> yes. And they had what was they the... had cheese in their diet because it was hitting hard. <laughs> it was hitting hard. <laughs> <And> solid. <laughs> Whether Martin did this stuff on purpose. I'll never know. Honestly, I want to say I think it just happened, though. Like I said, but geez, yes. uh, that's a lot of mud. <laughs> <laughs> another another um, similarity between part three and five is there's some consistency issues with continuity going. Um, part three, there's a scene with Debbie. She gets out of the shower. This was right after Andy was killed, um, quartered in the hallway. She walks out and she's got this pearl necklace on. And then the very next shot, as she turns a corner, the pearl necklace is gone, which lead, takes us back to part five when Pam and Reggie are running through the woods in the third act, and it's raining, and they're screaming, and Reggie is power screaming better than Pam was, and 
total total love for Melanie Kinnaman. She kicked asses, Pam. She is totally. I think one of her, her final girl is very iconic with with fan artwork and stuff. But Reggie oh, was yeah. Reggie was kicking it up a notch higher with the scream levels. But anyway, her sweater her sweater was there and it was gone and it was there and it was gone and it was there and then it just it must have ended up somewhere with Debbie's necklace because <laughs> the, the <laughs> and and I and I love that. Those are the two continuity issues, and I and I bring those together because no other installment has those continuity issues, and no other installment has the mud butts than the Catrosa written screenplays for a part three and five. <laughs> I'm sure he's proud, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a fan, so there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So am I. It's 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 fun similarities, and I I seem to remember there was something else that we talked about that was a slim similarity between part three and five and i can't recall what it was it might have been maybe the chase the chase between the two girls they definitely both put up a put up a oh, fight yeah. chris chris's chase was epic but you know pam with the really? chainsaw and just giving it her all and you know having no weapon so using just what she had what was a i believe it was a, a shovel handle or an axe handle as yeah she swinging away was. yeah yeah looked um, like that yeah, and the, of course you have the barn that was in the climax of part three, and the barn and climax of part five. Oh um, yeah, yeah. So that that was pretty cool. And then there was a couple things about part five that get a lot of criticism from fans. You know, with Pam holding Reggie at the moment by the tractor, and and Roy grabs him, and again up at the barn when she's holding him, and he reaches up and grabs him. Uh, yeah. A lot of people say, "Oh, I saw that coming." Yeah, so what? Watch the movie and have fun. <laughs> Freaking A, it's a horror movie. Come on. It, it is, it is. And yeah, it is. And then um there was a fan on and I wish I could give credit to this this name of this fan. I can't remember the name, but they made a statement. We're gonna go back a little bit here to Ma Hubbard. There was a statement somebody had said it was in a Roy Burns fan Facebook group or messenger group or something but somebody had said i wish there had been a chase scene with ma hubbard because carol lockta would have been <laughs> great at, at in that scene and we would have loved to have had that and i and i couldn't have agreed more and i never thought about that i didn't feel like the world needed that chase scene because of the you know you watch it and that's what you get but ever since someone said she should have had a chase scene i i'm like damn i'm really missing that we should have gotten that chase scene so whoever said that if you're listening you are 100 percent correct i think a little chase between roy and and ethel would have been absolutely hilarious could you see her hiding out in the chicken coop maybe slipping and falling all that chicken shit that that had been recently shoveled back there yeah we could have seen what a good job he had done i mean i wanted to see yeah. more of the, the hubbard's household i mean yeah at least exactly. give a few rooms of the house and him walking through stalking her yeah exactly. i mean she I'm a, yeah she could have picked up she could have picked up junior's head and threw it at him and maybe discovered <laughs> tina's body or you know some some yeah. really great epic fun adventure that they could have had i think i think their backstory actually if we ever if we could get some actors that were very good with their delivery and um, portrayal of those characters, I wouldn't mind having a little backstory movie of those characters to show how <laughs> they ended up these lovable backcountry, oh, yeah. uh, if you will, it. characters in the franchise. Yeah, 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 definitely my favorites. Uh, <clears throat> I just, I wish you hadn't have said that because now my mind is going to be working on that, you know, <laughs> scenario. So anyway, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, a uh, quick mention, we haven't really talked about Robin or Jake very much. I like both of those characters. I think they were great. I, I, I think the scene where they were watching, uh, TV on the couch together was a sweet moment when Jake confessed his feelings and then her genuine sorrow that she felt, for the way she reacted i think that was a great moment between those two it was very well written and i you could feel his frustration and embarrassment and then you could feel her regret and i and i thought that was um probably to me one of the more powerful moments in the movie as far as characterization goes yeah yeah it was seemed to be lacking for a lot of the sub characters but you know you got mm -hmm. that moment with them and that really that just yeah, tells yeah. you the talent was there. There just wasn't enough time. 
for the cash. Yeah, like, ex ex exactly, exactly. And then you got, I just throw out there a little bit of uh, Lana, uh, a lot of love for Lana and uh, oh, yeah. her breasts were, were a very well appreciated. And my understanding was the <laughs> actress, Rebecca Sharkey, it was her idea to say um, her. Showtime. It's showtime. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So uh, <laughs> that, that became, that became a, a very unforgettable scene in the movie too. So part five to me, it's just got so many wonderful scenes in it. You got the flare down the throat with, um, with Vinny and oh, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's raw. It's brutal. And I say that a lot about these films, but they are, they're, most of them are very raw and brutal. Yes. At, le at least the first five films. When you start moving into Zombie Jason and the the other films here, it, it becomes a little more expected and hokey. You get yes. some cringy moments. But anyway, before we end the, our discussion of A New Beginning, I want to ask you, what is your favorite kill in this installment? Mm, you know, God, that's been coming forever. I knew it was coming. Um, I don't <laughs> think you've ever spot. talked about it. You are putting me on the spot. Um, putting you on the spot. I, let me. I'll, ugh, this is a tough. I honestly, I wish they'd kept, and this is going to sound grotesque because people think that no, this movie inside and out of everything, I must be a psychotic. If they had left Violet's death the way it was intentionally, intentionally meant to be, that probably mm -hmm. would have been the most brutal kill in the series. Um, yes. And that's why, not because of what happened. If you want to discuss that in a minute, you can. But, um, you know, I think probably the best <clears throat> death, geez, they're so, it, it had to be Deborah. You know, Tina's, mm -hmm. uh, with the, uh, the shears to the eyes and the pop across that nose bone, I assume, uh, that mm -hmm. curling. My God, I, I can still yeah. hear that in my head. So, yeah, yeah I'd have to probably say Tina for Great me. Great sound effects on that one, too. Yeah. Yeah. What's your least favorite? My least favorite is actually probably the guy that cleaned the chicken coop. I mean, he got a, it looked like a wooden branch or. Yeah. I don't know what some that people, was. Some people death. say it was a knife. I thought it was a wooden branch as well. It looked like a yeah. stick. Right. It was such so, a, a quick cut. And I think he was the throwaway character of the film. However, he's not my yeah. least favorite uh, death in the, in the episode, in this, in this installment. I think first of all, I'll mention my favorite kill goes to Vinny. I thought the road flare down the throat was so horrific. I mean, <sighs> just can you imagine the situation and that experience if that were the way that you actually go? I mean, what a <clears throat> what a sick fuck thing to do. I know that was actually from part four, and I didn't plan on saying that. It just came out, but that was a sick fuck thing to do of Roy to do uh, to Vinny. That was really uh, messed up. That's but got a tie least, with Tina. Yeah, it's yeah, it's got to tie with yeah, yeah. For me, yeah, least, yeah, yeah. It's definitely uh, it's the only time you see it in the entire franchise. Like Tina, who else got? No one else got killed with the the the, the shears. shears, right? My hey. least favorite, I'm gonna mention again, is is Violet because you got this amazing build up. You got the bloody hand turning the doorknob. You got her dancing with her back turned. She doesn't know the doom that's coming you don't she doesn't know her demise or her or her entr entrance into oblivion is 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 approaching her she has yeah. no clue he's standing behind her they get this great shot like between the legs and the the bloody machete and she's still dancing totally unaware you got the storm brewing outside the the atmosphere and the ambiance is just truly hitchcockian and and feel and she's still dancing and he's approaching her and the audience knows it's going to happen. And she turns around, he grabs her by the throat and that's when it falls to shit. We get a knife shoved between two pillows and a gray shirt. Yeah, Boom, yeah. Done. I almost would have rather him picked her up and not killed her at all. Just strangled the life out of her. If, if, you know, if they had to reshoot her death scene, yeah. I just, was that, a, what was that? A, two pillows with a, a plastic sandwich bag with fake blood in between them and you just had to hit the <laughs> spot and it was like it just didn't even look like a human anatomy behind the shirt but <laughs> I think which they tried again up. yeah yeah in a later movie by the way and cut it out so yeah which we'll talk about that when we get to that movie yep i know exactly who you're talking about too yes. yeah yeah but the lead up the lead up to violet's death was probably one of the most terrifying with the biggest letdown for me for me yeah, yeah. but um 
Yeah. Anyway, thank it you was. for joining me for a new beginning. I I loved I love this conversation, uh, and I hope I didn't sound too excited with the way I would talk, <laughs> repeat myself, run on, or <laughs> jump around. But uh, no. anyway, uh, this has been Jason Bradford with my great uh, I will say co-host uh cohort at least on this this episode this this ride into the friday the 13th world uh jimmy presley thank you for joining me jimmy and uh just for listeners to know i'm raising funds for animals in need for animals charities foundations and uh misplaced animals in maui right now i am on cameo all funds raised right now 100 percent will go toward misplaced animals in maui trying to keep them united reunited with their families so Jimmy, thank you for joining me for our talk on Friday the 13th, part five, a new beginning. And until we meet again at Camp Forest Green, you take care of yourself and watch out in those woods for Roy Burns. All right. Thank you so much. It's been great.